तेरी बहन की शादी फिक्स हुई ना तो स्ट्रेस क्या है खर्चों का तो उसी जॉब वाले बड़ी सैलरी के साथ दूसरी इनकम काफी है Well, hello guys. Welcome to my stream. And today we will be uh, studying from Nizo Academy for our DLD Lab examination, which is Viva and uh, uh, surprise test as well, which includes quiz. So we have two days left for our examination, and uh, uh, we have zero knowledge about what DLD uh, DLD's module holds for us. So. this is pure from zero to where we land like in two days so uh it's a one hour session first and then we'll see where it goes because i also don't know where i'm heading towards okay so let's start it uh well shout out to nizo academy for this wonderful uh playlist because uh, for them because of them i'll uh, i'm able to you know sort everything really easily uh during my first year examinations and uh, hopefully it will help me on my third sem as well welcome to the first lecture in the digital electronics course and uh, this course is also called as digital logic or digital logic and designing in various colleges the name is not important the name of the subject is not important then but the content is and the content is going to be same almost same in all of these courses so you can start from here we will first see what is a signal then we will see what is an analog signal a discrete time signal and then we will see what is a digital signal so that we can start our digital electronics course so let's move to the signal what it is a signal is a function that represents the variation of a physical quantity with respect to any parameter this any parameter is the independent quantity and it is generally time or distance so the function is definitely dependent upon this independent quantity and uh, i hope you already know about the function from your mathematics course but we will also see one example that will clear this things more so let's say my function is f and uh, as it is dependent upon the independent quantity and i will say my independent quantity is x then i will write it as f 
x this shows that this function is dependent on dx and let's say it is equal to minus of a x square plus bx plus c now this is my function and uh, I will try to implement this function in a daily life example for this I will take a boy let's have a boy and this boy will do a work for us he will go to a particular place and measure the temperature from morning 9 a.m. to the evening 9 p.m. so he's having his thermometer he will stand there and he will measure the temperature in every one minute so I can say he will have a data at the end of the day from 9 a.m. then 9.01, 9.02 like at 9 a.m. he is having 27 degrees Celsius then 9.01 is having 27.5 degrees Celsius in the same way he will have the different temperature for different time till the 9 p.m. So this is his task and uh, he will have a data, he will have a list of the temperatures for a different time. Now what we can do with this information, we can plot it. So let's try to plot it and uh, you already know that this x-axis we use for the independent quantity and this y-axis we use for the dependent quantity and in this case the independent quantity is time definitely the time is independent I will represent it by small t and uh, this axis will represent my temperature t capital T is my temperature and as it is dependent on the time I will write t here now we can plot this values let's say our origin is 6 a.m. and this point is 11 p.m. this is a 9 a.m. and this one here is 9 p.m. so we will just show the temperature for the different times and let's say it comes like this and then we can join these points and we will have our function like uh, this so this particular function is the downward parabola and it is having the equation like minus of a t square plus bt plus c this minus of a shows that we will have a downward parabola and there is one condition for that this a must be greater than a zero if this a is equal to zero we will have a straight line because t will be equal to bt plus c this is the equation of a straight line y equals to mx plus c the c is the intercept and if this a is less than zero we will have the upward parabola the upward para bola so this is a little bit about the functions you have already learned these things in your mathematics back in the 11th standard so we'll not go much into that and uh, finally you can have your signal this one this function is your signal you will have the values of the temperature for the different time and that is what the signal you will have a pattern that will tell you how the temperature has been changing from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. so this is what you have to remember about the signals now I will narrow down this study of the signal and uh, I will talk especially about the electrical and electronics and in electrical and electronics usually the signal is the variation of the electrical quantity generally current or voltage with time so it's important to write this thing and uh, let's write it down in electrical and electronics usually usually signal is variation you can see here we are having the variation of the temperature with time in the same way we have the variation of the electrical quantity and this electrical quantity is generally generally 
current or voltage and what is the independent quantity in this case the independent quantity is time so this variation of electrical quantity generally current or voltage is with time so this is something you have to keep in your mind and there is one very important point that you must know if the current or the voltage remains the same for different time then it is not a signal it is a direct volume for example if I talk about the current the current and if current is same for the different time then it is then it is direct current it is not a signal it is a direct current and we can say di the small change in the current is equal to zero the current is not changing and you can plot it simply like this the current at t1 let's say this is t1 is i naught and current at t2 is also i naught so the is i I not and current at T2 is also I not so the current is not changing it is a direct value and thus it is not a signal signal must vary with the independent quantity and uh, let's talk about the transducers a little bit so the transducers are the device which is used to convert the non-electrical signal to an electrical signal and the reverse transducer is the device that is used to convert the electrical signal to the non-electrical one and let's see one example for it if you are singing a song you require a mic this one is the mic okay and you are singing near to it so that your sound is converted to the electrical energy this sound creates some vibration and that vibration is converted into the electrical pulses and that electrical pulses is amplified there is a device that we call as the amplifier because definitely it is required to amplify the signal so that it can be converted and interpreted well so we have an amplifier and once this amplifier is there it will amplify and uh, then you have a speaker the speaker is there and then again the sound energy is given back so sound energy is given in it is converted to the electrical energy it is processed well and then again it is given back as the sound energy by the means of the speaker so this is how the signal works and it is a very small explanation for the signal there are so many hundreds and thousands of types of signal available to us and we have just saw one example for the temperature now in the next presentation we will see what is the analog signal and the discrete time signal then finally we can have our digital signal so this is all for this presentation see you in the next one I think we should explore a few solutions Grammarly suggestions catch when you're talking in the last presentation we completed the introduction of the signals and I also gave you one example in which we were at the temperature from 9 a.m. in the morning to the 9 p.m. at the night I also told you in electrical and electronics the signal is nothing special but the change in the current and voltage with time so in this presentation we will move forward with our signals and we will see what is an analog signal before actually going to the actual idea let me first tell you the difference between the analog clock and the digital clock why we call this analog and why we call this digital so let me write it down this one is the analog clock and this one is digital clock so let's first talk about this analog clock in this you can see we have three hands the first one this one is the hour send this one is the minutes hand and the small one is the seconds hand so we can say that this analog clock or this clock can have the time as hour then minute and then second so it can take any value in 24 hours now let's see what happens in the case of digital clock this one represents hour and this one represents the 
minute but there is a no second in this case once we have 60 seconds passed this 12 will change to and we have 13 we cannot see what is going in between this 12 and 13 because it is not allowed in the digital clock either we have 11 12 13 14 15 not 11 minutes and 10 seconds it is not allowed that's why this is digital because in digital we have certain levels like this let's say this is 11 minute 12 minute 13 and then 14 either you will be on 11 or 12 or 13 or 14 you cannot be in between 11 or 12 like this is 11 minutes and 30 seconds you cannot have the value equal to 11 minutes and 30 seconds because second is not allowed this level this intermediate level is not allowed in digital clock on the other hand in analog clock we can have 11 minutes and 30 seconds definitely that's why we call it analog because it is analogous to the time we, we have every values in the given limit so this is a small thing which will help you to understand the analog and digital signals now let's move to the actual thing here you can see t max t max is the maximum temperature and let's say this plot or this graph is for the temperature and we are measuring the temperature from the first of the month and this one is for the last day of the month that is 31st and we are measuring the temperature like this let's say without for any reason like rain or something we have the temperature lower from the 16th of the month so this is the plot and we can see that this particular plot is analogous this one is analog why this is analog because you can see that each and every value is possible from 0 to T max the temperature in let's say degree Celsius we can have any value like this one is 27 degree Celsius and we can have 27.8 degree celsius in the same way we can have 27.88 degree celsius and um, all the intermediate values is allowed and let's say t max is 47 degree celsius so from 0 degree celsius we can have any value between the 47 degree celsius so this one is analog because it can take any value within the given limit so analog signal is the signal which can take any value within the given limit now as we are talking about the digital electronics let's change this T max by the V max this T max is V max V max is my voltage and this is 0 volt and this is V volt that is the maximum voltage and let's say V max is 20 volts so it can take any value between 0 and 20 volts because it is an analog signal now we can move to the next type of signal that is the discrete time signal so let's study what is a discrete time signal because it is important to understand this signal before we move to the digital signals so let's see what is the discrete time signal the signal which is defined for the discrete interval of time is called as the discrete time signal so I will write this thing down so that you can have a better or proper definition of the discrete time signal the signal which is defined the signal which is defined which is defined for the discrete intervals of time is called as the discrete time signal now let's understand it with the help of this graph before that I will clear some space so that we can understand it easily okay I will copy this down and then we can analyze it so let's copy and then paste I will drag it down and now we can analyze it in discrete time signal the time axis that is my x-axis is discretized by discretized I mean let's say we are measuring the temperature 
on 11 o'clock daily so this is the 11 o'clock of the first day then this is for the second day and this is for the last day and this one is for the second last day these are for the different days and all are on the 11 a.m. so what between the 11 a.m. of the first day and the 11 a.m. 11 a.m. of the second day we don't know we don't know what is the temperature between the 11 a.m. of the first day and the 11 a.m. of the second day so this definition this value of the temperature is not available to us so we have to remove it so let's rub it down okay in the same way we don't have the value of the temperature between the 11 a.m. of the last day and the second last day and the same thing will be applicable for the other days of the month so this is how a discrete time signal looks we have discretized the time axis this is not proper but you can draw it proper and in the same way we have to eliminate this portions also now this one is the discrete time signal we have the definition of the function in this case it is the temperature for the discrete time values let's say this is t1 this one is t0 t2 all the way to tn so we have the value of the function at t0 then t1 t2 all the way to tn the value of the function we have for this times only what is between t0 and t1 we don't know because we have not monitored the function for that particular time so this is what a discrete time signal looks and uh, you have to know one thing that the signal is actually analog the change is definitely analog but we have not monitored this particular sections so we have a discrete time signal and the discrete time signal is the subset of subset of analog signal analog signal so this is an important thing to know and the all real life signals are analog signal and I think this is all we are already pushing the time and we have learned two things the first one is the analog signal and the second one is discrete time signal in the last presentation we completed analog and discrete